Today we are in another BMW E92 M3. This is the third one I've reviewed now in less than a year. And yet this is also the most excited I've been to review one of these cars because the way this car is set up by its owner Chris is exactly what I would look for in an E92 M3 if I bought one. And as some of you know, I almost did buy one before I picked up my Porsche Cayman S a couple years ago. And the reason why the setup of this car appeals to me so much is that it's all focused on the touchy-feely bits of the car. So for suspension, we have the KW Club Sport two-way adjustable suspension, SPL control arms, Hotchkiss sway bars, and a bunch of other parts that I will list in the video description because the list is so long. He also has the carbon fiber drive shaft, which he mentioned saves about 25 pounds. He's got BBS wheels, Yokohama Advan, A052 tires, a very, very sticky street tire. In terms of weight savings, even though we have these stock seats, which are extremely heavy, like 65 pounds each, this car he corner balanced at around 3,400 something pounds. Now that's at least 200 pounds lighter than a stock E92 M3. And he mentioned he plans to get this car down to 3,100 to 3,200 pounds. That's really light for an E92 M3. He has, a, I think it's Auto Solutions short shift kit. And he also mentioned the clutch pedal is aftermarket. So it has a shorter throw with a much more positive engagement. As you guys will remember, those were two of my least favorite parts of the stock E92 M3, the black one that I drove a few weeks ago. Also, I want to compare how this car drives against my 997 Porsche Carrera 2. I think that's a question that's come up quite a few times in my previous E92 videos and we're going to drive it back to back with the E92. I'm only going to film the E92, but I'll try to articulate some of the main differences between the way the two cars drive. Now right away this short shift kit feels so much better than the stock BMW rubbery shifter that they're known for. Gotta love the S65 engine, one of my all-time favorite engines. Right away, this car feels so much more planted and well-sorted than a stock E92. I mean, this car has 97,000 miles, so almost identical mileage to the black one that I drove. This suspension, the KW Club Sport with shelf spring rates, feels so good out here. It's tight and controlled in the corners, but it gives you really good compliance over bumps. So much grip from these A052 tires, 265s in the front and uh, 295s in the back, 18 inch BBS wheels. This feels nothing like a stock E92 M3. And that's saying something because I really like the way the stock car handles. You know what? I think the suspension modifications Chris has done has actually improved the steering feel as well. This is a really good car. Stock brakes are not amazing, but out here in the canyons, they actually do a decent job. At least the brake pedal has a very linear bite to it. It's not overly sensitive. Man, this engine's good. This Akrapovich exhaust that he has on here is actually pretty mild, at least from inside the car. And I like that. All you really get is induction note. So Chris's approach to this car just makes so much sense to me because the engine is the one place where the E92 M3 already outshines almost anything else you can get for the same money. In today's market is around probably thirty to thirty-five thousand dollars for a clean one. So he's pretty much left the engine stock, just a simple exhaust to open up the sound. And then he modified the parts that matter, the suspension, the driver inputs, the shifter and the clutch pedal feel so much better than stock. The clutch throw is much shorter, and yeah, I can actually feel the engagement point now. <laughs> this is how this car should feel from the factory. Woo! All right. Still plenty quick in a straight line, and you know, with the carbon drive shaft and all the other weight-saving mods, this car definitely feels quicker in a straight line. It's a subtle difference, but the difference is definitely there. <laughs> Gosh, this engine's so good. 
the S65, as long as you do your rod bearings and your throttle actuators, you're good. Just focus on reliability and, and you're good to go. Now let me demonstrate how good the KW Club Sport suspension is. There's a big bump right here and we're just gonna go over it like so. A single compression and rebound stroke and the car is settled. I mean, that is exactly how you want an aftermarket suspension or, or even stock suspension for that matter to handle bumps in the canyons and the club sports just do such a good job they're so much better than the kwv3s in my opinion in the corners here it's control it doesn't give you compliance through a low spring rate the spring rates on this car i believe are somewhere in the range of 600 to 700 pounds front and rear Gotta love the top end of this engine. I'd be curious to try a supercharged one of these cars next. Just to see how that extra power affects the handling of the car, number one. And secondly, if it affects the throttle response at all. That's one of my favorite parts of the S65, it's just razor sharp response. Are so good. It almost feels like something Porsche's GT department would create, which is to say, you know, taking a stock street friendly car like the base E92 M3 and just really hunkering it down with suspension and improving the driver inputs. Handling wise, this car gives me almost as much confidence as the 997 GT3 that I drove just yesterday and that is saying something because that the 997 GT3 is one of the best cars I've ever driven. Now let's talk about how this car compares to my 997 Carrera. The E92 M3 is a car where you have options when you're cornering. So let me elaborate on that. When you enter a corner it's easy to make the front end of the car, the front tires, give out before the rear. It's easy to induce understeer in an M3 if you simply turn in too fast. Now that said, you can adjust the line mid-corner with the throttle. If you give it more throttle, you can get the back end to slip just enough to where the front end regains traction and carries you through the corner. The 997 on the other hand, you can lean on that front end really well, especially with that hydraulic steering rack. It gives you tons of feedback, a lot more feedback than this electric rack. However, when you feed it throttle mid-corner, because it's a rear engine car, all the weight's over the rear axle, the car actually understeers more. So it's harder to adjust your line with the throttle in the 997. If anything, you have to actually back off mid-corner to get the front end to tuck in. And so these two cars demand a very different driving style. And I gotta say, the front engine rear drive formula just, it speaks to me a lot more than the rear engine rear drive formula because I'm just so much more used to having that throttle steerability, for lack of a better term. Just look at the way this car handles these higher speed corners with a lot of mid-corner bumps. It just soaks it up. The tires maintain contact with the road incredibly well. <laughs> I mean, we're carrying some pretty good speeds. I'm honestly really, really blown away. I would take this car over my 997 any day of the week. Now where the 997 still has the M3 beat, hands down, as I alluded to earlier, is the steering feel. The hydraulic rack of the 997 generation is one of the best steering racks I felt in any car. Any car. That's including, you know, all the manual steering rack cars. The, only, the exception would be Lotus. I think Lotus still has the best steering of, of any car I've ever driven. But the 997 comes close. <laughs> And I was expecting to still prefer the Porsche's clutch and transmission feel after driving this car, but the short shift kit and the aftermarket clutch pedal really 
transform the driver, the driving inputs of the car. It's where it's not on my mind anymore. The, the the shifter and the clutch, they just work the way they're supposed to work, and they're no longer a negative for me. If he's able to get this car down another couple hundred pounds to like 3,200, this would give an E46 M3 a run for its money in terms of nimbleness. So this is the third E92 M3 I've driven in less than a year, and it also happens to be the best one. If you guys ever want to build an E92 M3, just go to the video description, copy the mods that Chris has done here, because this car is fantastic. Thanks for watching, see you next time.